Hey guys, Mand here. <clears throat> okay, so this video is more of a serious video than um, most of mine, really. I want to talk about suicide and what it's like personally for me, um, like what goes on in my head, or what I haven't really. Um, tried to commit suicide since I was um, in eighth grade, but excuse me, I want to just tell you from my point of view what went on in my mind because I know a lot of people will say that committing suicide is selfish because you're leaving your loved ones behind and and that sort of thing. And I do understand that perspective. I understand where people are coming from. Um, and I get why that's such a hard thing for people to accept if they do have a loved one that does commit suicide, such as a parent. You know, it's very hard when young children or children at all lose their parents to suicide, or anyone for that matter. Um, okay, so for me, I can't speak for anyone else. I'm only speaking for me. We've all had periods of feeling down, you know, maybe feeling worthless or not good enough or whatever, you know. And most of us, if we, even if it's grief or whatever, you know, you go through the grief process, you feel bad, but eventually you come up and then you go back to your life and you learn how to, if you've lost someone, to live without them and that kind of thing. But you, your mind, you know, it, it, um, it goes through that process and then you get better, you know, and then you're no longer um, in the grieving stage or in the down stage or whatever, whatever the reason is. For me, excuse me, excuse me, when I tried to commit suicide, my grandmother had died. Well, sorry, she died when I was in seventh grade. I tried to commit suicide in eighth grade. So it was a long progression of time before I even attempted it. And I started the grieving process. And of course it's normal to feel bad and cry all the time and be angry that the person is gone and, and, and all that stuff. That's perfectly normal emotions and you should feel that. But for me, instead of, you know, you're like here, happy, and then you go into grief and then you do the grief thing and then you come back up, I continue to go down and down and down and down because it hurt so much it was as if I had died and I guess a part of me did when when she died a part of me went with her you know and I didn't know how to deal with my emotions I wouldn't talk about it I kept it to myself and I began dealing with it in non-healthy ways such as drinking, smoking pot, smoking cigarettes, hanging out with people I really shouldn't have been hanging out with, um, you know, not going to school, sleeping all the time, you know, that sort of thing, which really doesn't help if you want to come out of that, right? Well, I was so consumed with my emotions and I didn't know that I had bipolar back then I really didn't know and because I wouldn't talk about it it consumed my emotions my heart and, and all that and it consumed my mind and all I could think about was how much I missed her and how angry I was that she died 
um, before I became an adult. And, you know, just the loss of her in general. We had a very strong relationship, very connected. And it was too much for me to bear, and I wouldn't get help for it because it hurt to talk about it, it hurt to think about it, it hurt to feel, it just hurt. And I guess a way that I dealt with that was I went into myself. And what I mean by that is I, I guess it would be, um, ooh, cold, I have my window open, <laughs> it's winter time. Um, I'm cleaning my oven, <laughs> so I have the window open so it's not so bad. Anyway, um, I went into myself, and I guess you would kind of say that's like, oh, what's that word? Um, where you're there, your body's here, but you're like, I can't think of the term. But you guys know what I mean. Like, you're going through emotions, but you're not really there. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you're watching yourself. I can't think of that term. Anyway, I became very numb, and I didn't care anymore. All I wanted... All that was going through my mind was that I wanted the pain to stop. And like I said, talking about it hurt. Thinking about it hurt. And it just made me feel even worse. And I was thinking, what would help me to not feel this pain anymore? Because all I'm doing is suffering. Everyone around me is suffering because I can't deal with this. And I know what's weighing on them. And I don't want to be a burden to anybody. All I'm doing is making them feel bad. Now this is what I'm thinking, right? It's what I'm feeling. I'm just feeling so sad and angry and it was just too much to bear. And over time... I slowly started thinking, the only way that I'm going to feel better is if I see her again, or, you know, if I can be with her. And the only way I could think to do that was to kill myself. I thought, if I do that, I won't feel pain. I won't feel sadness. I won't feel anger. I won't feel anything that makes me feel bad anymore. And then I can be with her and it will stop. And in my mind, I was thinking this would be better for the people around me because then they won't have to deal with what is going on with me. My acting out, this, that, everything. I just felt like I was no good to the people around me. I was no good to myself. And I just wanted it to stop. And in my mind, I didn't think or feel that I was being selfish in ending my life. I felt I was being selfish by letting everyone down, by being such a mess, by not being able to laugh or just be myself. I, I didn't know how to do that. It felt like an insult to my grandmother, you know. So, from my point of view, I felt like staying here. Having other people have to deal with what I was going through and that I couldn't handle was selfish. That, to me, was selfish. People, I felt like you. they shouldn't have to deal with this. They shouldn't. You know, and yes, I did try to commit suicide. I'm glad that I didn't succeed because now I have my son and, you know, I'm not in that place anymore and I hope I never am again. But it's... Unless you've been there, it's really hard to convey what it's like to feel that way or think that way. 
you have to be really, really depressed. Like, nothing matters anymore but ending the pain. And you don't see any other way. It's like having tunnel vision almost. That's all you can see. And the light at the end of the tunnel is not having to suffer and not having your family and your friends and anyone that's trying to help you suffer. I know that saying this stuff, a lot of people are still going to think, well, it's selfish, and you have every right to think that. I'm not trying to change your mind or, or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what it's like what it was like for me. You know, I mean, I say it out loud and it doesn't sound as bad as it felt. The experience of it was horrible. It was horrible. You know? I know some people can relate to how bad it feels and wanting to end your life and Others you can't, and I understand that. I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to get you to think in a different way or whatever. I just want to try to help you understand that it's not, from our point of view, it is selfish to be here and make you guys feel bad. You know, you can't help us, you can't comfort us, you can't talk to us, you can't reason with us. You can't do anything, and sometimes being around our family, our friends, it makes us feel worse because we look at you, or I would look at my f family, and all I would see was my grandmother, you know? That's all I would see. And it was so hard for me. But I made it to the other side. I did. It took me a long time. My grieving process for my grandmother wasn't a year, it wasn't two years, it was, it took me about, I don't know, five, six years, maybe longer before I could think about her and not cry, and not feel that pain that I felt when she did die. There is no right or wrong way to grieve there is no time limit on grief. I mean, think about a parent who loses their child. They're going to grieve for the rest of their lives. It's not, they're always going to miss their child. <clears throat> you know, so there is no limit. If anyone tells you, oh, it's been a year, you should feel better. They really shouldn't be talking <laughs> about that because they obviously have no idea what you are going through and they shouldn't tell you to stop feeling what you're feeling we need to feel emotions we need to do that that's what makes us human so yeah I guess I just wanted to you know just talk about <sighs> what it was like I'm sorry if you don't understand if me saying this doesn't make a difference in, in, in your ability to understand what it's like from, uh, at least from my point of view. I can't speak for others. Um, but just please try to understand that if you're dealing with somebody who is suicidal, that they're not trying to hurt you. That is not what they're thinking at all. They're thinking they don't want to keep burdening you. They don't want to see you cry. They don't want to see you upset. They don't want you to have to deal with their pain because it's too much for them. It's too much and not knowing how to deal with it and not being able to go through the pain, feel it. Even if it makes you feel horrible. The only way through pain, or to get, the only way to come out to the other side of a bad situation like that is to go through it. It's the only way. But sometimes it's too hard. And we just don't want you to have to deal with 
our mess. At least I didn't. You know. So, yeah. I don't know if this was helpful in any way. I hope it was. You know. Like I said, I'm not trying to make, you know, change your mind or anything. I just wanted to tell you what it was like for me emotionally and what was going through my mind at the same time. All right, well, I'm going to go. <laughs> uh, i got to close this window because I am cold. <laughs> All right, you guys all take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye.